Hi out there, how are you today? I hope well. We are in Zephaniah. I'm going to read uh, read it all the way through. I hope you don't mind. It's getting warmer here in San Diego. and um, I don't have AC, so I had to open the windows and it's it can be noisy sometimes. There's only um, three chapters in Zephaniah. And um, it's about a prophet that's warning the people of God's coming, his judgment, doom, repent or else. I know that sounds familiar to a lot of people, especially these days when everybody's getting on their, um, uh, when they're getting at the podium talking about end times. I can, I can see where um, it'd be frustrating. Like where all this talk of doom would, where is the, uh, what is the right thing to do? And well, I can say from Zephaniah and from just my own experience and what God says is the hope is we can repent. The hope is that we can turn to God. The hope is that it doesn't have to be all doom and gloom for his people. Um, that's what he sent his son for. And that's what he calls us to do is, is to repent, ask for forgiveness, ask him into our heart. And so these talks of end days, end times don't have to be so, so um, doom and gloom. So, so end times. Yeah. So let me just say a quick prayer of praise and then we'll jump into it. Heavenly Father, I'm thankful for your word today. I pray that it is your message that is heard and not mine. Father God, steady our hearts and our minds so that we can better receive and understand your word and one day share it. We thank you for your life-giving word. We thank you that you are a loving God, that every day is a new, another day to do things better, to try things again, to turn to you. So I pray we don't take it for granted. Father, I, I pray for anything that's on the viewer's heart, anything that's troubling them, anything that's hurting them. Father God, we lift it up right now. In the name of Jesus, I just ask that you surround them, bless them, heal them, restore them, uh, be in relationship with them. I just thank you. I know all is possible with you, so I give you the praise. It is in your mighty name I pray. Amen. All right, Zephaniah, we have a word. How, that's how it starts <laughs> in the summary that's in the beginning of my Bible. So the word of the Lord, which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, the great day of the Lord. I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the birds of the heavens, the fish of the sea and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place, Baal, the uh, gods that they worship. The names of the idolatrous priests with the pagan priests, those who worship the host of heaven on the housetops, those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but who also swear by Milcom, those who have turned back from following the Lord and have not sought the Lord, nor inquired of him. No, they're inquiring of other gods. Milcom, Baal, there's plenty more. Verse 7. Be silent in the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice, for he has invited his guest. And it shall be in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children, and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel in the day I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And there shall be on that day, says the Lord, the sound of mournful cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter and a loud crashing from the hills. Well, you inhabitants of Makdash, for all the merchant people are cut down. All those who handle money are cut off. And it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish the men who are settled in complacency, who settle in their heart. The Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become booty and their houses a desolation. Their goods shall be supplies and uh, for the taking by somebody else. They shall build houses, but not inhabit them. 
They shall plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hastens quickly. The noise of the day of the Lord is bitter. There the mighty men shall cry out. The day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of devastation and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet and alarm against the fortified cities and against the high towers. I will bring distress upon men, and they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like refuse. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he will make speedy remnants of all those who dwell in the land. A Call to Repentance, Chapter 2 Gather yourselves together, yes, together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued, or the day passes like chaff, before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. So he says it twice. He's, he's, um, it's emergent. I got, it's urgent. It's move now, not yesterday <laughs> or tomorrow. I'm sorry. <laughs> not, move now, not tomorrow. Before the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you, seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth who have upheld his justice seek righteousness seek humility it may be that you will be hidden in the day of the lord's anger for gaza shall be forsaken and ashkelon desolate they shall drive out ashdod at noonday and ekron shall be uprooted woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast the nations of the cherethites the word of the lord is against you o canaan land of philistines i will destroy you so there shall be no inhabitant the sea coast shall be pastures with shelters for shepherds and for folds for flocks. The coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed their flocks there. In the houses of Ashkelon, they shall lie down at evening. For the Lord their God will intervene for them because they have turned to him and he will return their captives. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the insults of the people of Ammon with which they have reproached my people and made arrogant threats against their borders. Therefore, as I live, says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be like Saddam and the people of Ammon like Gomorrah, like Gomorrah, overrun with weeds and salt pits and a perpetual desolation. The residue of my people shall plunder them and the remnant of my people shall possess them. This they shall have for their pride because they have reproached and made arrogant threats against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be awesome to them, for he will reduce to nothing all the gods of the earth. People shall worship him, each one from his place, indeed all the shores of the nations. You Ethiopians also, you shall be slain by my sword, and he will stretch out his hand against the north, destroy Assyria, and make Nineveh a desolation, as dry as the wilderness. The herds shall lie down in their midst, every beast of the nation, both the pelican and the bittern shall lodge on the capitals of her pillars. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be at the threshold, for he will lay bare the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt securely, that said in her heart, I am it, and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down? Everyone who passes by her shall hiss and shake his fist. The Wickedness of Jerusalem, Chapter 3 Woe to her who is rebellious and polluted, to the oppressing city. She has not obeyed his voice. She has not received correction. She has not trusted in the Lord. She has not drawn near to her God. Her princes and her midst are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves that leave not a bone till morning. Her prophets are insolent, treacherous people. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. The Lord is righteous in her midst. He will do no unrighteousness. Every morning he brings his justice to light. He never fails, but the unjust knows, to, knows no shame. I have cut off nations. Their fortresses are devastated. I have made their streets desolate with none passing by. Their cities are destroyed. There is no one, no inhabitant. I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instructions so that her dwelling will not be cut off, despite everything for which I punished her. But they rose early and corrupted all their deeds. They didn't take heed to the word. Now a faithful remnant. Verse 8. 
Therefore, wait for me, says the Lord, until the day I rise up for plunder. My determination is to gather the nations to my assembly of kingdoms, to pour on them my indignation, all my fierce anger. All the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language, that they all may call on the name of the Lord, to serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshipers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. In that day you shall not be ashamed for any of your deeds, in which you transgress against me. For then I will take away from your midst those who rejoice in your pride, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. I will leave you I will leave in your midst a meek and humble people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies, nor shall a deceitful tongue be found in their mouth, for they shall feed their flocks and lie down, and no one shall make them afraid. They are the remnant, they are the survivors, though they are the ones who have turned to God, and they have seen so much destruction and death all around them, and they saw his judgment they saw his anger so of course they will not say anything they will tell the truth they will lie down where he says lie down joy in god's faithfulness 14 sing o daughter of zion shout O israel be glad and rejoice with all your heart o daughter of jerusalem the lord has taken away your judgments he has cast out your enemy the king of israel the lord is in your midst you shall see disaster no more in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear. Zion, let not your hands be weak. The Lord your God in your midst, the Mighty One, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly, who are among you, to whom its reproach is a burden. Behold, at that time I will deal with all who afflict you. I will save the lame and gather those who were driven out. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will bring you back. Even at that time, I gather you, for I will give you fame and praise among all the people of the earth when I return your captives before your eyes, says the Lord. Zephaniah, chapters 1 through 3. I pray no matter what that I never give up. It is so easy to give in, to fall into that routine of just going about the day, not praying, not thinking of God, not giving thanks for our family, our blessings, our, our jobs, our bills being paid, the food we have to eat, our safety, the fact that we can read a Bible, the fact that we can go outside and it's still peaceful. There's other lands going through so much turmoil. And I can't imagine, if we can't call on God when things are going well, how more likely are we going to call on God when things are going horrible? And even if we did, it would be an agony. It would be almost too late, I think. But, I mean, he listens. He hears his children that call after him. I'm not God. That's why it's important to have a relationship with him. It's important to have discernment like you basically you judge for yourself you you make decisions on on what your spirit feels on what your intuition is telling you and what maybe god is leading you to believe so in these times um with everybody speaking end times and and talking of uh everything being hopeless remember there is hope in god I know I'm ranting a little bit. It's just I didn't know what to say with everything going on. I don't want to keep talking about the wars. I don't want to talk about Biden. And it just, <laughs> I just wanted to give thanks and read a little bit with you guys. So thanks for joining me. As always, take care of yourself. God bless you. Bye.